Right now, PG&E is in deliberations with the State Public Utilities Commission requesting $3.2 billion more than it received in its budgeting all of last year. But this week, the commission fired back with just half of what they're requesting. We proposed what we believe we need to do to execute on those plans and also to enable this clean energy transformation. PG&E spokesperson Lindsey Paulo sticking right with the utility company's request of $15.4 billion in operating costs, $3.2 billion more than it was allowed to spend last year. Right. Paulo pointing to the costly endeavor to bury 2,100 miles of power lines across California to eliminate that wildfire risk. It's about a 98% um, risk elimination factor with undergrounding as compared to copper and conductor, which is about 65% risk elimination. That preference covered conductor lines over undergrounding outlined in the California Public Utilities Commission's proposals. On Wednesday, the Oversight Committee issued two decisions, adding either $1.6 billion or $1.1 billion. In a response on Thursday, PG&E says the proposals, quote, fall short in funding critical wildfire mitigation. We've made significant progress. We need to continue to make that progress to keep our customers and our communities safe. Paulo tells Fox 40 the 900 page proposals also cut costs on public safety power shutoffs and automatic wildfire detection for high risk homes. Those are important tools in our toolbox. But according to another PG&E spokesperson, a power shutoff in Yolo County at the end of August was the first PSPS in a couple of years. And the rise in revenue means a bump in bills for millions of PG&E customers, whether or not the energy company gets its way. Our team is analyzing the proposals to try to determine what the impact will be to our customers. And once we have those numbers, we will absolutely share them with you and with our customers. And I also reached out to the Public Utilities Commission to get a response on both of these proposals, but they told me they did not have anyone available today. And they also did not elaborate on just how much more customers can expect to pay once either of these proposals is approved. There will be a vote on both of them on November 2nd. Reporting in Sacramento, covering local news that matters, I'm Mason Morrow, Fox 40 News.